Hey everyone, I'm Garrett Hallfish. Uh, this week, I'm gonna contradict myself a little bit. Now, a couple weeks ago, I brought up a topic saying how there was too much nostalgia going on right now. And I, I still stand by that. Um, but this topic, I'm gonna talk about how happy I am that uh, a bunch of the old Hanna-Barbera cartoons are gonna be remade or kind of revamped for the modern generation, but in comic book form. Uh, and there's a very good distinction between uh, what I was talking about last week, a few weeks ago, and now, and that's being, that these are being made into comic books. And I think that's great, because comic books are a place where you can really explore and really expand a franchise, because you don't have the multi-million dollars that are going into these movies, these TV shows, you can get by making a comic book at a much smaller budget. You just need an artist and a writer and then a publisher. And comic books are made all the time for pretty cheap. And to have a big company like DC putting some money behind this, like, there's a pretty good chance that these can either be really good or they can be bad. I mean, comic books are kind of iffy, but if they do end up bad, then they just stop a few issues later and no harm, no foul. But if they end up being great, then you have a no whole new franchise to enjoy and grow up with. Uh, so, of course, the comic books I'm talking about are um, the Scooby Apocalypse. Uh, that's probably the one that most people are upset with, just because the art is so different. Um, but I think it's actually really cool to take what was simply, like, uh, chasing monsters as kids to turn it into, like, an actual kind of sci-fi comic. Like... That, that could be a really fun idea. And so I'd love to see them explore that and see what sets this apart from the Scooby-Doo of yesteryear. Uh, we've also got Racky, Wacky Raceland, which I think is perfect because the guy who's helping create that is the same guy who did uh, Mad Max Fury Road. And that, that just seems like a perfect fit. I mean, why not make what was already a car racing thing and make it into kind of a post-apocalyptic kind of war car thing. Like, that could be really cool, because how many of us actually watched wacky, wacky races growing up? I don't know. Uh, then we've also got the Flintstones, which admittedly is a pretty simple one, uh, but as I'll talk about later, Archie did a great revamping, uh, where it's just a, just a nice change in tone, a little bit of change in tone, kind of just more modern jokes, different art style. And that, that's okay by me. We've also got Future Quest, which is probably one of the most ambitious from them. Uh, basically, think of if they were, if the Hanna-Barbera universe was like Marvel. Uh, and this is basically their Avengers. Uh, they're taking all of the rest of our cartoons. So you've got Space Ghost, you've got uh, Johnny Quest. You've got all these other franchises that are getting mashed up into one kind of team and they're just going to be fighting, like, like it's fighting evil and do, doing crazy all sorts of things. So that could be a really epic comic. So all of these I am completely okay with being made into. Uh, and frankly, I am, I am biased because with comic books, I, I feel like comic books are almost entirely based on nostalgia these days. Uh, and I want to explain to you a great example of where this sort of thing has already happened, and that's with the Archie comics. Now, Archie comics, you may not have known uh, that they are still around and still making uh, many new ones. Uh, a lot of us, like I myself, grew up, uh, and my mom would grab it from the uh, conveyor belt at the, at the shopping center. You just grab it because it was like a dollar. And it would just be all these random uh, collection of Archie comics, and I loved it, I absorbed it. But that's, that's like 50s America. And so, what's great is, so Archie just had a huge revamping, and that's fantastic because they brought in Mark Wade, who's a fantastic writer, and they just made it more modern. He has a more modern look, so people, so kids can grow up and appeal to him again. They've uh, brought in more relevant stories, so like, they have cell phones, they have more modern cars, they have all the same sort of things, but it doesn't feel like this, like, 50s suburban America. It feels 
like Suburban America Today. And they, so far it's been really good and really funny and I really enjoyed it. Uh, they've also, alongside Archie, have Jughead, which is fantastic. It's the same artist who does um, the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. So if you, if you like that art style, which I actually really do, it has a character to it, then you, you should enjoy this. But it's great because it's the regular Archie story, I mean not the same one that's coinciding, but, but from Jughead's perspective. And <laughs> Jughead is such a great character and with this you've been able to explore more um, and you, it's become like this surreal kind of comic because you'll just daydream and you'll end up doing fighting space monsters or doing secret missions. And that's a really fun twist to what could have been a boring comic. Uh, then they also have their, uh, their spin-off series, which have been great. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Archie been doing spin-offs for a long time. I mean, there's, most famously, there's Archie meets uh, the Punisher. And it's just one of those things where like, why are they doing it? Just to have fun, uh, to play around with that universe. Uh, they've also, uh, from uh, 1991, they also had Archie meets the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And once again, it's just bringing two completely different universes, putting them together, and just having fun with it. So more recently, they've had Archie meets Kiss, which I actually haven't read at all. I'm not a huge fan of Kiss, but it, it just looks crazy. Uh, but what I did read was uh, Archie vs. the Predator, which if you love Archie like I do, and you love messing with Archie, like kind of the, the, the lore of Archie, this is a comic book for you. It's not perfect, but to see people that are so happy and then bring the Predator in it, and they don't tone down the violence at all. It is, it is a very violent comic, but it's just so happy looking because of the art style that you can't help but enjoy reading it. Uh, they did a very similar thing with Sharknado, where that, that one wasn't quite as successful, but Archie vs. Sharknado and Archie vs. Predator, they're both just really enjoyable books to read. And there are just these spin-offs that you don't have to read, but if you grew up with Archie, you'll probably like these. Uh, and probably my favorite of the most recent Archie series, uh, they don't come up very often, it's the Archie Horror series. That being Afterlife with Archie uh, and The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Now, both of these... I think there's there's really only a handful of comics out there, so if you haven't read them already, go ahead and catch up. These are fantastic things to read, uh, but it's great to see if if you grew up with Archie, you you know the backstory, you know all the characters and everything. Basically, like Afterlife with Archie, imagine the tone of The Walking Dead, but with Archie, and I actually think this is better than The Walking Dead, just because. I know all these characters and they they mess with it so there's these two characters that are twins and they mess with kind of what people might have thought in the back of their mind about these twins but bring it to the foreground and just those sort of elements make it such a happy but so depressing story that I really think you would all enjoy. And then Sabrina, if you grew up with Sabrina the Teenage Witch which was very lighthearted, this is not at all lighthearted. She she really gets into dark magic, and there's a lot of messed up stuff that happens there. And both these work together to just give you these really chilling tales. And I think for any Archie fan uh, from yesteryear, you guys should read these things. And so with that, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, please let me know what you think of the new sort of studio space. We're kind of still moving things around, so we, we might tweak some things. Uh, but let me know uh, if you do read Archie comics or you do uh, read any sort of comics, let me know if you're excited uh, for these new DC comics from the Hanna-Barbera uh, era. And just let me know. And so if you can, uh, please like us on Facebook. Uh, you can find it in the description below. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter at NerdMuchCom. I'd like to thank you all for joining us this week. See you next time.
I would also like to use this moment to quickly talk about the recently revealed that Riverdale, uh, the series based off Archie, uh, is they have announced they are creating a pilot for CW. Uh, now, CW has definitely stepped up their game uh, in more recent memory because of Legends of Tomorrow, uh, The Art Arrow, and The Flash. Uh, but this one, it once again messes with uh, how perfect Archie's life was, kind of everything was happy-go-lucky, and just gives you this weird sort of feeling with all the surreal nature of living in a suburban family. And if you think that this could be bad, which it could, but I really enjoyed growing up in the 90s. They had, in 99, they had Archie's Weird Mysteries, which was a great Saturday morning cartoon where literally it was just Archie and his friends. And they were basically like the Ghostbusters. They were, they were solving mysteries. It was almost like another Scooby-Doo, but it was, it was fantastic. They were aliens, they were monsters. It was legit. 